Hello and welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, today we are looking at the trackpad on a uh, MacBook Air. This is a th second or third generation, I think. Um, it's the one with the solid state drive and actual ports on it rather than the stupid flappy thing that the early ones had. Um, so I've done this repair before on a MacBook Pro and it's actually one of my most popular videos is how to remove the trackpad and clean it up. And there are quite a lot of people who ask me about doing this on a MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro Retina. Now I don't have a Retina on hand, but I do have this MacBook Air. So we're gonna take this apart and see how that trackpad comes out. So I've already removed some of the screws on the bottom of these. This is a five point pentalobe screwdriver. It's 1.2 millimeter. You can get it on eBay for about a quid or two. And that will get these screws on the bottom of the laptop out. So. Let's just remove those remaining screws that I've put back in to hold this together and we'll start investigating it. This particular MacBook Air uh, is actually dead. Well, it does run, but the, um, it suffered liquid damage, which means the trackpad on it doesn't actually work. So uh, this is a bit of a blind test, but it just shows you how to take it apart. So we've taken the bottom cover off. We've got a swollen battery cell on this one as well. Got to watch out for that. And what we need to do is remove this battery. So we're going to start out by disconnecting it here, like that. That's now disconnected. And we've got to take out the screws that hold it in. So we're now on to Torx screwdrivers. I think those are going to be T6s. Uh, what is this? No, it's a T5. So these are T5 screwdrivers, screws. Now we'll just loosen all of those off and we'll be able to remove that battery. Whoops. Now this battery has come out before, so I can't remember if it's glued in or not. However, if I have a look on the bottom, I should be able to see whether it was glued in at some point. Right. Uh, no, I'm not seeing any marks of... You might find that there are some double-sided tape, so you may get some resistance for the battery coming out. I'm not sure. You'll just have to try it and see. If you get resistance, you may need to use some kind of metal prying tool or a pallet knife just to very gently pry the battery out. So now that's removed, we can just clear that out of the way. And as you can see, we're now down to the back of the trackpad. Um, so at this point now, we want to disconnect the cables going to the trackpad. So we've got this main incoming cable here. Just hit, flip him up. And I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers just to grab that cable and pull it out. And we've got the uh, keyboard cable. And uh, this one is a bit weird. We have to unlock it from the inside edge of the cable. If I can get my tweezers in there. No, can I get a fingernail in there? Yes, I can. All right, so as you can see, that little locking bar there has just been pulled up. And now that will pull out like so. So now there's nothing connecting that trackpad up. So now we'll disconnect or we'll take out the screws that are holding that in. These will be double O Phillips. And I'm gonna go along the back row of screws Got to be careful how hard you press on these screws because we're pressing directly onto the screen here. However, they may be a little bit stiff, so just be careful as you take them out. Make sure you're using the right screwdriver. If you don't have a double O Phillips screwdriver, you will just strip these thread heads to shreds and then you won't be able to remove it. And if that happens, you've got to get a Dremel and grind them off which ain't pleasant. There we go. And now I think we can lift that up like so. And that just slides along, get that out of the way and slides out. And there's our trackpad. So that's the actual mouse clicker button there. That's the click bit. And this screw here that is the weight adjustment for how heavy or light the click is. So if you screw that, if you screw that further in, so if you turn it clockwise, the click gets lighter, it gets easier to click it. If you undo it, the click gets heavier, you need to press harder to get a click. So you can adjust that to your preference. 
So um, now this is out, to actually clean it, we're gonna get a toothbrush and we'll start out just by going around the edges just with a dry toothbrush, just like this. I'm not being too rough with it, just getting those bristles across the edges. I'm trying to get into between the gaps here. Respect it as well because uh, it's rigid but it's also made of glass so if you bend this edge it will just break off. So just remember that. Right, this one is actually relatively clean so there's not much that needs to be done here. If you can see there's loads of visible grime around the edge then you may need to use some kind of cleaning fluid. You could use rubbing alcohol or you could use glass cleaner or something similar like that. So the other thing we'll do Let's just pick up these screws here. Is we'll open up the laptop and we'll just go around the edges of the trackpad bay, as I would call it, like that. And I'm just trying to get right into those corners. It's the grime that accumulates under here that will stop your trackpad working properly. It'll make it jumpy and unresponsive. The trackpad is reasonably clever at picking up false input but eventually there's so much gunk under here that it has difficulty trying to figure out what you're trying to do because it's getting misleading signals from everywhere. So once that's done, we'll just turn that back around again and we'll refit that trackpad. So to do that, we're going to get button first, we'll lift up that cable and we'll just feed that in holding it almost flat but just lifting the back end slightly up and then just drop that in like that. So then put the screws back in. Now for the time being put the screws in but don't make them super tight. Just leave them slightly loose just so they're holding in place but they're not actually tightened up. And then what we do, just make sure, oh, that's a little bit too tight. I'm just gonna back those off slightly. There we go. So that's nice and loose, and I can just make sure that's seated right. Now, ideally, I want to make sure that it's bang in the middle, but more importantly, if I open the laptop back up, I want to make sure that it's actually straight, because it's possible to have it slightly crooked, and then you'll have a gap up here and no gap there, and that'll annoy you, or it'll annoy me anyway. So you want to position it so it's just as central as you possibly can make it. And then once that's central, just very carefully turn that back over. I'm just going to tighten, just nick one of those two screws up there. And I'll just check it again. It's a little high, we've got quite a big gap along the bottom there. I can actually get my fingernail in that. I don't like that. Let's just see if I can pull that down slightly. With only two screws tightened, it should have a little bit of movement. That's better. There we go, I can't get my finger in there now. Right. Now that's done, we'll just tighten those screws. I say tighten, we're just, we're just putting them to biting tightness. I have no idea what the actual torque settings would be, it would be tiny. I'm literally just turning it until the screwdriver just bumps out of the screw. No pressure applied at all. These things aren't exactly going to fall out because the battery's on top of them. So we can now reconnect those cables back up and put this one back in. This one's awkward because you've got to do it all backhanded. Again, just use a pair of tweezers if you need to, just to help guide the, the, the ribbon into the connector. I think that's right. It's really hard to tell with this because of course you can't see what you're doing. Come on. Yeah, that's right. And then we'll just close that locking lever. Again, super awkward, really hard to show you that, I'm afraid, you just you'll see it when you get here. Right, that's done. So we can now put our battery back in. Again, just a quick thing, watch out. You see how this, back, this cell here is swollen up? That's a sign of battery failure. I'm going, I'm going to screw this back in for the purposes of the video, but I'm not going to reconnect this battery. This is dangerous. 
uh, if this was to be charged heavily, this could rupture, and if it ruptures, it could catch fire. Whenever you see the stories of burning iPods and things like that, this is how it starts. It's not immediately going to explode and blow me up, but by the same token, you want to be super careful when you're dealing with that kind of thing. Nice. I very helpfully turned the battery over and lost all the screws for it. Oh, this magnet is useless. Let's get a better one. That's the wrong screw. I think we've got three different lengths of screw here. And if I've lost all of them, oh, oh wait, here they are. That was almost very embarrassing. I thought I'd lost all the screws. Right, so we've got these super short ones. We've got two long ones. And then there's a, me there's a very long one that goes down the middle. No, that doesn't want to go in still. Try that one more time. No, nope. I'm just going to compare that with one of the other screws I've got. Somewhere there's a slightly longer one, and that's it, I think. Let's try that one. That's the one. There we go. So we've got three lengths. We've got a short, two mediums, two shorts, two mediums, and a long. There we go. Right, I'll just connect that for posterity's sake. Whoop. Okay, and now that goes back on. This goes in the bottom edge first. Let's just lift that up again. So bottom edge in first, just so that edge lines up, top down. And then we can now, once again, using our um, five point pentalobe screwdriver, drill these screws back in. Right, now I'm actually unable to close this one properly. That swollen battery is actually preventing this from sitting right. So that's as far as I'm gonna go with this one. However, at this point, you should now have a nicely working trackpad and it should be nice and clean. So again, as you can see, mine's actually gone slightly wonky um, where it's shifted slightly. So again, just double check it. If it's not too tight, you may just be able to strain it up using your thumbs. If not, just loosen those screws off straighten it and just tighten the screw up from behind while uh, while you hold it in place and you can just get that absolutely straight and if you want to you can just adjust that click weight as well so that's it thank you very much for watching i'll see you all next time goodbye for now